Back here at Rickson's, we're going to uh, show you how to service a S2 D2L diesel heater. They should be the same procedure for the B4L, D4L, D4, uh, even the B2 is very similar to this. Your harness, a lot of people tend to have issues when they go to unplug these harnesses because they do go together very hard and they come apart kind of hard. So the goal here with this harness, when you go to unplug it, is to find the release tab, push down and back. So you're going this direction and then back a little bit. So you go down and then back. And if you hear the click, we'll do it again here. Down and then I'm, not, I'm pushing down really hard and nothing's happening. It's not till I push down and then back this direction that it actually unlocks the tab. And then you can kind of hold here tight and wiggle back and forth here and she'll unplug. First thing you're gonna do here is there's a couple tabs. So you're gonna pull up on these tabs lightly. If it's been a long time and they're hot and cold a lot, you may uh, you might break the tabs. So you gotta be kind of easy with them. Once you remove those tabs, a lot of times what I'll do here is get into the little knot, notch there and then you can kind of pry this cap off. Get your cap off top cap off. Peel this rubber grommet. Again, sometimes if they're been in service for a long time, this will kind of get melted down, but try not to damage it when pulling it off. Once that's all off, you have one more rubber grommet here that holds the wiring harness into the housing. Kind of slide that up and the whole outer case will come off. Now you're just looking at the burner itself. <laughs> Start off here, you have the uh, ECU control unit here. It's got one screw, two screw, three screws. So you're gonna go ahead and remove all three of those screws. So all three, all three are the same length, so you can't mix them up, it doesn't matter. Once you've removed the three screws, the ECU pulls directly up, so just slide up and kind of tip off to that side. Now. These pins are what it came off of, so when you go to put it back on, you want to make sure you get them nice and lined up, and when you're pulling it off, you don't pull it off one way or the other. So first thing I'd do here is remove these wires out of the little retainer clips on the back of the ECU by just pulling them out. This plug is pretty easy. There's a little tab on the very back. You just push down on this tab, kind of give it a little wiggle. It'll unplug. Get my screws back. This plug's a little more difficult. Uh, you have a yellow safety clip that has to be lifted up. So yellow safety clip up. There's an inner black and an outer gray part of this plug. So if you hold the ECU firm and pull out this direction on this gray cap on the plug, it'll actually force the plug to go out that way. So as you go that way, it unplugs. ECU's unplugged, be careful with this. They're very lightweight and if you step on it or something it's going to break. So now we got everything unplugged, ECU's off. You have three screws, one here, two, three, to get this fan unit off. There's a rubber grommet between the heat exchanger body and the fan unit so you'll just lightly pick up. This one came off pretty easy because it's new. Um, when you pull this off, you always want to check and make sure you spin the fan by hand and make sure it's not um, rubbing, grinding, making any weird noises. That's something you'll want to check. Uh, if you lightly pull this rubber grommet off, it really shouldn't need to be replaced. It's kind of a lifetime gasket. So just make sure it's not damaged and you don't rip it in the process of taking it off. Um, now that we're down to this point, there's a rubber boot over the glow pin wires. So I usually will pinch the rubber boot and kind of just bend it side to side lightly. Now going straight out, not pulling side to side anymore. Going straight out, I'm sliding the rubber boot up the wires. Then I will take a 12 millimeter box wrench and put it on the glow pin, which is there. 
loosen that glow pin up now because you have these wires attached you kind of have to spin the whole thing around and if you wanted to get fancy you could do a terminal removal tool and actually pull the wires out of the plug but that's way more work than just spinning the whole unit around so now the glow pins out you have three more Torx 25 screws down inside the housing here so the heat exchanger body screws are the little short ones the bigger fat long ones are for the fan housing and the little three small ones are for the ECU that's all the screws that are in the unit there's a total of nine screws so now you have this rubber grommet here that holds the fuel line which is attached to the burner tube and if you just slide up on this tube and grab this center of the burner tube housing and slide up you now have your burner tube this gasket here this green gasket will commonly be split or deteriorated so you'll want to remove that gasket uh, take some carburetor cleaner and spray in here what I'll do is a little wire brush clean up the gasket surface clean up all these fins on the inside make sure this looks good once that's all nice and clean you can reinsert your new gasket only goes in one way looking back at the burner tube I will normally remove the rubber grommet here from the fuel line and I would heat this up lightly with a torch to kind of burn any stuff out once it's burnt out and clean a lot of times you got a couple options you can take a small pick tool and you can kind of get it in there there it goes you reach in there and you grab this mesh screen and you're grabbing it about like this with the pick tool and you just kind of pull on it and pull it out now if it doesn't want to come out with the pick tool what you normally would have to do then is take a small flathead screwdriver get it between the housing the wall and the screen itself and bend one of the edges in once you bend it in far enough you can take a small pair of needle nose pliers grab around the outside of the screen and pull it out that way so if they, if they don't want to come out with a pick tool then you're going to have to use something a little more aggressive by like bending it in um, the screen when it gets reinserted it has a set of welds so you'll find your new screen this is all cleaned out made sure there's not any big chunks or no no cracks in it no cracks in the burn tube um, find the three welds you know your fuel comes in here this is the fuel line you don't want these welds in front of where the fuel comes in so normally I'd go like 180 degrees out something like that now with your new screen it will come with what's called an insert tool so it's a tool that pushes it in to the certain depth you'll take that tool put the screen over the end of the tool shove it into its home until it stops now this is all cleaned out you got your rubber grommet back on new screens in there new gaskets in here we'll lay this back down and start reassembling one other thing you want to look at with these one if you look at the end of this plug you can see in there if you kind of hold it at an angle the camera may not pick it up um, all the metal connectors are close to the end all of them look equal everything looks uniform if you look at the back there's uh, rubber boots around each one of these wires and all of them look uniform all of them look like they're pushing all the way everything looks good sometimes from the factory or something will happen or one of these pins don't get locked in and the wire will pull out slightly and that can be a problem that could be something that's causing your furnace not to even run so examine this plug examine this plug same thing make sure the metal pins look like they're out to the edge the rubber grommets are all seated equally not you know one's hanging way out doesn't look right this is a combination temperature sensor you want to make sure this unit is also seated properly seated all the way down and tight you don't want it to have a bunch of slop or wobble or play so um, make sure this is good all the plugs look good combustion fan spins free everything looks good nothing looks damaged start re, re uh, reinstalling all the parts and you'll be finished with your service so, uh, Slap the short screws in that uh, burn tube. Get your glow pin. The 
glow pin wires are actually soldered on at the housing. So you really want to avoid flexing on these back and forth multiple times. Um, it's not something that's really meant to be flexed on or moved around a lot. So when you're doing this, keep as little tension on the wires as possible. So you're not twisting up the wires or uh, breaking the solder. Once you got it tight, as tight as you can get it by hand there, you'll take your wrench and just get it nice and snug. Scoot your rubber boot back down. Once the rubber boot's in, the wires should always face forward. So if for some reason your boot got turned around towards the back or up towards the top, they should always face towards the front of the unit. Um, now, we're looking for our little rubber gasket. Sometimes these can be a little tricky to put on. You just gotta get them lined up to where everything looks equal and right. Combustion fan spins free, pins aren't damaged, everything looks good. Make sure the seat's right. Get your three long screws, the bigger long screws. Okay, those are good. I can go back to the ECU here and we'll start how we had it before with it kind of faced away from me. And we will plug in our combination sensor here at Snap doesn't unplug unless I push the release clip so we know we're plugged in all the way. This plug here. You got to kind of leave the gray tab open until it locks in and as you push the gray tab in it starts to seat this plug. Once it's seated you'll push your little safety retainer clip back down. Can't pull out, can't push in, everything's nice and tight. <clears throat> you can reinsert your wires back here, be from the glow pin and the combination sensor, so they don't get pinched in the housing when you put it back together. And then when you put this back on, you're really looking to make sure that it goes on nice and smooth, right? When you push it down, it shouldn't. You shouldn't have to do a lot of force. You shouldn't have to do a lot of pushing or. If you are, you're, you're most likely smashing those pins in between the ECU and the fan. That's not what you want to do. So then your three screws, smaller screws for this ECU to be held on. Then we're looking at putting this, you know, start with the bottom of the exchanger body in the housing. Slide it in. Your rubber grommet for your wires here. Seated. You always want to kind of, you got to kind of do one of these with it a little bit until it seats in its position. Once it's seated, you'll see the fan is very close to the housing, but if you spin the fan, it doesn't touch the housing. That's another thing you'll want to check when you get totally done. So we'll slide this cap on, it kind of seats in the back. We'll click these, they both should lock in. Once you have these locked in, again, I stress this, make sure you spin this fan and you don't hear any noises because I've, I've done it where I put this all together and it's touching something inside after I reinstall it in the rig or something happens. So spin this fan, make sure it's free of any kind of obstruction. Uh, you got your little grommet here. The cupped edge goes towards the heater. The flat edge goes towards the vehicle. Fuel line hole. It goes on one way. I'm going to push this down all the way around as tight as you can get it so it seats properly. And when I put the end caps back on, notice only two of these have actual notches to lock in. The other two sides are empty. I'll normally put the notch side where the notch on the, on the housing is. So then you have an easy spot to get a screwdriver in there. If you, put it, if you put these notches where it doesn't have that spot, it can be kind of difficult to get your screwdriver in there to unlock it. So usually I'll put the notches on this where the notch is in the center here. And then you give it a little tap. And she's all back together. And then obviously you're going to remount this in the rig, put your exhaust, your air intake pipe, your fuel line, your four nuts on the bottom, plug in your harness, and away you go. If you guys need any help, you can always give us a call, 503-668-6090. This is Mike from Rickson's. Thank you.